Okay, first and foremost, I would just love to know how you got involved in acting and your the craft. Okay, um, if I may. Yes. This is my book, Exercising My Demons, and it will tell you exactly the answer to your question. It, what starts out and talks about dreams, and if you have dreams, that you should never drop them. My sister wrote a book and she said, um, if you drop a dream, it breaks. So it's really about following your dreams because when I was a little, and I kind of came, there was Twiggy and people like that in between, but before that, it was Jane Mansfield, Bridget Bardot, and Jane Russell, you know, women with big kids. And um, there I was, this little kid, um, kind of androgynous, kind of flat-chested, with butt teeth, and I want to be an actress. Everybody looked at me and said, yeah, right, uh-huh, sure. So, it's about your dreams, and it's about negativity, and don't listen to the negativity. But anyway, after that, then it gets my breath. And it's written by, um, it's on my book, and as Dan Louvier put it, um, I had, very funny things happened to me when I wanted to be an actress, and very sad things, and I had a Me Too incident, except it wasn't Me Too then, but someone got me all the way out to Michigan to do summer stock, and I told everybody in New York, I'm going to do summer stock, I'm going to be in this play, and that play, and everything else, and I was so excited, and then that got there, I just wanted to, excuse the expression, butt me. And um, he started trying to unbutt my blouse, rustle my hair, and then half the theater company, oh, he backed up to get a drink, and he almost put his eye out, and he started screaming. So half the theater company came into the room, saw me all messed up and tousled, and so they didn't talk to me after that. It was very sad, and then I got fired, because I wouldn't do what he wanted. And I didn't know what to do going back to New York. What was I gonna tell everybody, you know? Because I had just bragged about it. But I looked down at my hand, and I had my equity card. I was a professional actress, so it went on like that. And there are other sad stories, a lot of funny stories. I went to see Peter Pan when I was seven. And thank you. No, it's not that cold. You oh. never know. So I didn't know. Yeah. I thought that if I jumped on the stage, I could be one of the lost boys, right? And then I thought, what if I miss the stage? <laughs> and then I'm in trouble. That, so that's what the book is about. And then after that, um, anything you want to know about The Exorcist is in here. But a lot of funny stuff. I mean, you haven't lived until you read how Billy freaking directed the masturbation scene. <laughs> <laughs> he kept going like that. And I kept thinking, no, it's gotta go like that, you know? <laughs> so, but, you know, so that next, I'm really, I'm a good interviewer. You ask a question, I'm gone. <laughs> and this is for sale at your table, yes? Yes, it is. All right. What were some of the challenges? I apologize if this is in the book already. It's <laughs> yeah. okay. What are some of the challenges in playing the Zuzu? Oh, it's um, a good question. Because we only shot it one day. Really? All that? It was the very last day of the shoot that went on for four and a half months, believe it or not, from pre production to post production. and. The best line in that movie was, who do you have to fuck to get off this movie? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and it, I mean, it was great. I didn't quite know how Pazuzu came about, but Bloody Disgusting just did a whole article on uh, shots you've never seen, makeup shots you've never seen, and it's on Bloody Disgusting. And they actually showed the makeup test with the Pazuzu mask, and um, my other it's like a lot of people say, oh, you're a stunt double, or you're a double double. Um, it's funny, it sounds like bubble gum, double double. <laughs> um, but I actually did a shrink test for it after two improvisations, two casting uh, things, and I did a screen test, and they brought out a cross that was this big, uh, and that big, and I played both parts. Mommy, mommy, help me, help me. Yes, how you did. So it went on like that, so on. But so the, other, the only really other challenge was when we did the vomiting scene, you couldn't eat. Yeah. And I used to smoke, God forbid. Okay. So you couldn't smoke, but you couldn't talk. 
so that was a problem <laughs> with me. Um, so that was challenging. And also, I realized when I took the makeup off, the one that I looked like Reagan, not my shoes on, um, and they were all a little prosthetic, and I went to the movies, and they made popcorn with salt in it. That hurt. <laughs> so, but the challenge of, you know, like I said, Susan was just a half a day. Yeah. How did you develop the voice? Were you given instructions, or did you just create that in your own? I created it on my own. I don't even think Billy was in the room. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he was on set. Do we have any audience questions right now? Uh, what, what was it, do you remember your reaction when you first saw yourself made up as a Zuko? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long time ago, it was 50 years ago. I'm, no, I, I'm sorry, I don't, but the other part of that question is because the movie was supposed to keep the ending, and they kept, oh, it's ending here, it's ending here, it's ending here. We used to take bets on birthdays that people had and stuff like that, but I, I booked a commercial, and then they told me I had to come in and work, and the commercial people said, if you don't show up, we're gonna report you to the screen actors. And the actress just said, if you don't show up, we're gonna, <laughs> so I'm going, what am I gonna do? What uh, I don't know where my agent was. They looked like the thing was a joke, I think. But anyway, to make a long story longer, mm -hmm. uh, the whole crew knew. I said, oh, if I get out to you in the afternoon, will that be okay? And they, the commercial people said, yeah. So the crew knew what was going on, and they didn't particularly like Billy Freeman. So they really lollygagged, setting up shots and stuff like that. But they knew what was going on with me. So we actually did six different shots in the morning and just bang, 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 just got it off, threw me makeup, took off the makeup, threw me in the limo, got me out in New Jersey, so I actually did both. Wow. And the commercial ran a long time, yes. so that was really nice, it worked out that way. Can you imagine if I just done the commercial and didn't shoot Pazuzu? Right. Oh my God, I mean, that's my <laughs> life, that's the icon. The Warner Brothers uses that shot, as you probably know, all the time, and it's on the record album, and it's, it's not only on the cover, it's on the thing itself. Yes. Linda's not on it. Ha ha. It's such an iconic image, honestly. That. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it's the icon of the entire film. How do you guys feel? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Linda. Yeah. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, they have the worst picture on the, the 4K. Yeah. I also have my table, and it's amazing. If you guys want to see what they did with that film, the color, you can, you can see the blood coming out of the girl's face that um, did the spider walk. You can see the blood coming out of her mouth. They did, just did a great job if you're interested in getting that. I also have that on my table. I feel like I'm doing a commercial. And if you do that, <laughs> we will put it in. For only $25.95. Yeah, just today. To the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, right? <laughs> Had you read the novel? Were you familiar with the source oh, material? Yeah, this is what happened. And again, so in my book. Um, I did a play and um, called Ontological Proof of My Existence by a woman named Joyce Carroll. And a couple of agents came to see the show. Agents don't come to see shows anymore. But at that time, my nephew and his kids just walked out. Uh. How bizarre. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that they came to see the show and they called me the next day and they said, we have an audition for this horror film. And I said, sure. So I, they gave me the book to read. I took it home. I didn't know how to play a demon. I mean, who knows? So I went to the library and I got pictures of wild animals. Came home, pulled my shade down. I don't know why the hell, but I pulled my shade down with some candles and did like the lion. You know, slop, slop. So that's what I did. I did an improv, and again, I played both characters. And then it was funny because she said, That's great, but we want you to be smaller. Smaller? I was so small. But in the back of magazines, they had um, like these wetsuits. I don't know if they still have it, but you would perspire, right? And lose all this weight. So I didn't have time to get a wetsuit, so I wrapped myself up in saran wrap 
and rode my bicycle through Central Park. <laughs> I don't know if it worked or not, but it must have been a sight. So I did the tour of books. It wor that works temporarily to get small fast. <laughs> so if that answers your question, are there any other questions? Any audience questions? Yes. Uh, William Friedkin passed away recently. Would you? Uh, Which William Friedkin passed away recently. Yes, he did. And would you, would you uh, talk on your uh, feelings of working with him? What was it like working with him? Yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> um, he was kind of tough to work with. And most of you guys know it's not a, um, he wasn't an actor's director. And he didn't really trust actors. So that's why when the gun, you know, you all heard about shooting off the gun. Um, and that's the scene where they first see um, Reagan looking like the demon. And that's when the gun went off. <laughs> so. The first time they all came in, which was Kitty Wynn, Ellen Burstyn, and the doctor, they shot the gun off, and it went, oh, you know? And the second time, it was like that. The third time, it was, what the fuck is that? <laughs> um, and they also brought in some rotten meat, because they, he wanted to bring up the smell of the demon, so the crew got sick, so I heard. How did he know what a demon smells like? I'm dying to know. Right. <laughs> that sounds more like a zombie. Right. And a zine. So, corpse. And, and of course, slapping the creatures was the old girl out. Yeah. So he wasn't much of an actress director. So he was technical. And I thought the best thing he did was to hire incredibly talented people to work with him. From Bill Bryan, of course, with the screenplay. Owen Ross was a camera person. It was amazing. Who would say that? It, one of the reasons the shot went so is because you reshot just about everything. Wow. And sometimes Owen would go, that's not gonna work. You can't cut that together and shoot it anyway. So that's why we had bets <laughs> if he was gonna reshoot like the shaping room. So it was okay. You know, he got what he did. He had incredible editors, uh, camera people, obviously Dick Smith, you know, for makeup. Um, guy named Marcel, and I don't, don't really remember his last name, but he created like the bed up on this thing. So he had amazing people working with him. Um, what was your, your experience like with Max and Jason? What was my experience like with them? Oh, they were fabulous. You know, particularly Max. He's just one of the nicest people I've ever known. And what happened with him was that Billy Freakin wanted him to be like a Southern Baptist, like minister, and you know, God will rain upon you, whatever the Baptists do. And Max had no idea what a Southern Baptist was like, but he was very calm and very sweet, and they took a lot of Max with him. Yeah, because he just had no idea what a Southern Baptist sounded like. And obviously, what he did was amazing. I mean, I would lie in the bed, which, by the way, you know how cold that was. And we were freezing in those nightgowns. There's a story in here about my big spiritual experience, and, and I can tell you now. But um, it had to do with being cold. Um, but they all had wetsuits underneath their cassocks and stuff like that. So they were just in bed. But Max would always, are you okay? Are you okay? So it was five degrees in that room. Oh my goodness. It was cold. Did you get sick, like long term? No, no. I don't believe in getting sick. <laughs> I like your method. But so what they did do, they, somebody decided that if you ate a lot, you wouldn't be so cold, like the crew and stuff like that. So they had a little stand outside the set with hot dogs and hamburgers and shit on it and soup. So everybody just got fat. <laughs> <laughs> they were still cold, but they got fat. It was really quite an experience working on that. Yeah, they, um, yeah, just kept on. I was offered a Broadway show at Kitty Kitty Wynn was offered Glass Menagerie with Catherine Hepburn. That was really sad because um, they offered to do the rehearsals. They, they were shooting it in London, and they offered to do the rehearsals in New York. And she was done. I mean, she was basically done. It took a lot of the spiritual out of that movie. It was the spiritual, the medical, and the possession. And they took a lot of what Kitty yeah. Wynn did out of there, but they still wouldn't let her do it. And they said they'd rehearse in New York and shoot it in London, and they still wouldn't let her do it. I don't know if that's why she gave up that. It's tough. This is the answer.
That's what sure. happened. So it was all worth it. Yeah. I don't mean to sound negative no. at, at all. I mean, it was the experience for me of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I had done, I did some, my first film was called Teenage Gang Dips. <laughs> and we fought with knives. Weapons, um, and so I, I, you know, I worked before, and I did a PBS special and a couple soaps. But oh my God, this was a big studio film. Yes. So I was impressed when the first day we worked on to the last. If you guys get, you know, they need a feeling like that. You know, and every day, I swear, I get down on my hands and knees, and, you know, and say thank you, universe, thank you, whomever, to to, to have this happen for me. The final product is definitely something that lives on. I mean, look at what it's done. And it's still terrifying people. Can I, I guess it did their job. It, it, that is a testament to what you all accomplished in this film. So. How many of you guys saw Exorcist the Believer? What'd you say? Uh, the beginning was good, the ending, not so much. Yeah, that 20 minute, well I was bored. <laughs> I've heard that a lot, actually, though. Know. Kept waiting for something to happen or find out what happened to the girls in the woods or they had no demon in there. No. Yeah. You know? I was happy for Ellen Burstyn that she got a check. Yeah, she looked so frail, though. You know? And they really didn't give her anything to do. No, I mean, I, I thought it was a travesty. I really, you know, I, I did. Did you get to meet Ellen on the set or no? Ellen? Yeah, or no, Ellen were you said very much to herself. Yeah. And she, she was in tapes all the time. Like she books on the big actor studio person. Mm -hmm. So, but I, um, I, was, I spent the most time with Linda when she was 12. Yeah. You know? And I spent a little time with Jason. Um, but, um, yeah. A lot of times I came in, um, they put all that makeup on for three hours, mm -hmm. and I went home. Yeah. And, you know, they took the makeup off, we just didn't work. But that happens a lot on film sets, for sure. You know, I always had a thing with actors, they go, I came in there at 6.30 in the morning, I didn't work until 5. So, they didn't do, be home doing mm -hmm. something, they paid you, they yeah. get you for whatever, usually eight hours. Mm -hmm. Plus, it wasn't. Or a snack if you're lucky. <laughs> so, given this whole resurgence of The Exorcist recently, if you were approached to come back to any role in a new Exorcist project, would you consider it? Oh sure. Yeah. I play another. I play my demon. Yeah. <laughs> what if they wanted you to play another a different part? Oh, of course. I would. Yeah. No, no. I, I, I would hope. You know, my contention is the reason nothing works, like the heretic, and the prologue, and the beginning. Mm -hmm. They don't have a script. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they say the curse of the exorcist. No, no one's written a script. Mm -hmm. And then I had this idea, you know, they keep trying to do the same thing. Okay, you know, two girls are possessed instead of one. Yeah. Don't even go into the prologue in the beginning. It's just awful. Um, so my contention is if you want to make another exorcist, do it from Pazuzu's point of view. That's a great idea. You know, and then you get a, a terrifier feeling or something like Poor Pazuzu <laughs> keeps trying to inhabit people. It doesn't work, you know. But what what does Pazuzu really want? What does Pazuzu want from possessing these people? What is, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He wants to go back to heaven, which I doubt. I don't, I'm one of those actors. I don't want to direct. I don't want to write. I just want to act. You know. Yeah. It's just like that. That's good enough. And I'm doing two films between now and Christmas. So it keeps on, well, it, indie films have been so amazing in our lives. And actually, I should talk about that now. Please. I made a movie called Night of the Caregiver, which is on Amazon Prime and, of course, Tubi. Everything's on Tubi. I love Tubi. Yeah. If you put my name in there, yes. But Night of the Caregiver, is, I think it's a wonderful film. It's basically a two-character film. But it's really nice lady who outskirts. And you think she's really sweet and she's cookies and tea, and then you find out maybe she's not so sweet, <laughs> you know, and there's evil in the house, the character, she, she keeps hiring characters, and then there's some kind of evil, and then it becomes a, a cat and mouse game. So I would encourage all you people to see it, and if you like it, you know, go on Facebook or something, hashtags are boring, 
I want to spare no more. <laughs> Yay! It's called Night of the Carrot. Did you say there was another one, another film, or is that the one? That's, no, that's the one I want to talk about. Okay. Um, there's another film called um, uh, Of the Devil, which is a fun film. It's on TV. And that film kind of works, too. Check it out, guys. I mean, I'm just been so blessed. I've shot 16 indie films in the last couple of years. Are they all in the horror genre? Amazing. <laughs> the horror genre is great for indie. I mean, you know, we just love it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but now the studios say, oh, there's a lot of money to be made in horror. But I don't know if they have a, if they have a good one out. Right. I mean, you, you guys think of any horror films besides the Terrifier, which is just totally a thing of their own. And, that's, and it's, it's growing and growing. And it, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. They're so nice, David and Damien. Um, they're just such great people. Yeah, so besides that, are there other films that you guys are crazy about? The Evil Dead Rise earlier this year. How about Indie Film, though? Over Indie? Yeah. Birth Rebirth. Yeah? That was an amazing Indie film. It's on Shudder now. What, what, what is it? It's called Birth Rebirth. It's kind of a Frankenstein. Oh, okay. Kind of a yeah, Shudder's kind of cool. They have an interview with me on it. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to my table. Um, I do have my book. Okay. And, you know, if you guys want to come say hi, that would be nice. And um, that'd be that. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh.